this seems to be the favorite little car. I get mad requests. As soon as it comes in, it goes right back out. It's a 2007 BMW 335i. Now, why is that important? I typically don't buy the um, 328i's because they're slower, like significantly slower. This will do zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds, which is really fast. And this is a 2007. So one of the things that uh, I've noticed is they love these 335i's. I can't keep them. They go, once I get them in, they go out. And they're also pretty hard to find in really good condition. Because these are the cars that people like to trick out, modify, take to the track. Because with a tune, you can get this sucker to down like 3.3 seconds, which is very fast. My Porsche, which I had tuned, will do zero to 60 in about 2.7 seconds, which is blazing fast. So I'm gonna just start doing these little reviews once I get a car back, because essentially I had someone ask me a question, where do you keep 30 cars? I don't keep 30 cars because most of them stay rented. That's the game, man, that's the game. All right, this is the 550i. This is a monster of a car. It has a V8. I really love these rims. And essentially, it's kind of a sleeper. It's got a few rough things about it, but you know, and the angel eyes are out. You have to replace the whole headlight to fix those. So we're not there yet. And this is the car the hippie got into and messed up. But since it was stolen, that kind of messed up my whole game plan. So that's that. All right, this is the 535i. This is a really sweet ride. As power, style, class, and uh, I got a really good deal on it, really. And it was in great shape. It was a single owner, and it's awesome. This would make a good car for Uber or DoorDash. So we got the really nice steering wheel there too. All right, this is the 5.0 X5. As you can see, it's got a little bit of rumble, a little bit of rumble. It's been lowered and it had an exhaust delete, not an aftermarket exhaust but yeah, it does that. I don't know if I'm gonna keep that, but you got a lot of room back here. Family rented this to go to Tennessee, go up to the cabins. It was extremely dirty, dirty, dirty. But hold on a second. Let's see, can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that. That's it for this one. This one's gonna make me a lot of money. All right, this is the first diesel that I've ever driven or owned and this little sucker is fast 
I fully expect it to do really, really well on the platform because I've already had several people requested it. I just switched them to other cars. But yeah, this is sweet, sweet, sweet. I think that's it. Hold on a second. What's going on guys? Before we get into the Kill Switch Chronicles, I need to announce that you can get into the corporate papers for the month of August for the same price the last week of August. And let me say something. Don't wait till the end of the month. And this is why. You want to begin on your success now. The first lesson in the corporate papers is extremely important and it literally will take you, depending on what type of person you are, it could make take you a week just to do that. And then we're having another live training this Sunday at 5 p.m. Link is below, go ahead, get in now. So let's get into the corporate papers. Not the corporate papers. The Kill Switch Chronicles. All right, let's go ahead and talk about John Owens. I met John and he's a talker. And uh, you know, he told me, it's like, yeah, I'm probably gonna have this a week or something. He had a three day rental. And then just before his rental expired, he sent me this message. I'm off for the week. Uh, I'm probably going to extend for a whole week. And I waited. And I waited and I waited. Understand, I am used to dealing with yard bird. He started exhibiting yard bird behavior. Well, this yard bird behavior, saying one thing and not doing it. So he said he was going to extend it. He didn't extend it. And then after 24 hours, I was like, hey, are you bringing it back? Because once again, it doesn't take that much to extend. Either you're going to extend or you don't extend. So he didn't extend. So I was like expecting the vehicle back. So we're talking and he's like, I'm like, when are you going to bring the vehicle back? Right? Cause at this point he's 24 hours late and he's like, I'm at my attorney's office working on the settlement. I'll let you know within an hour, one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours go by. And I hit him up again. And I was like, Hey, we're closed for the day. You can just drop the vehicle off and leave the key under the driver's mat. And he said, okay, I'll be there at seven. So at seven o'clock, I went ahead to see where John was. And John was at a gas station. I was like, maybe he's going to bring it back. No, John went to the gas station and he went home. And this is the only reason that the car isn't on E. You want to know why the car isn't on E? John was going to drive that car for the rest of the week, two weeks if he kind of got away with it and not pay me. And I, I really began to think about this. It's like, why are people doing this? They wouldn't do this. And once again, I started investigating. They do this to Hertz. They do this to Avis, but not as frequently as they do it to Hire Car and Toro. 
And I began to think that they don't think of the people on hire car as business owners. And I'm about to say something. There are many people listening to the YouTubers and they're throwing their car on Turo. They're throwing their car on hire car. And you know what's happening? They're starting to get kicked off. You want to know why? Because they're not treating this as a business. When like all the cars that you saw, those first three rented today. You know where they were? I was washing them. I washed my cars. I fill them up with a full tank of gas before I rent them out. And I've heard from person after person after person who's rented my cars that the majority of the owners on hire car are not doing that. This girl told me she rented this car. The car was on E. It was on E. And then she said it broke down on her. And she's like, she don't see that car no more. So I have a certain level of professionalism because you rent a car for me. I want it to be good, clean, serviceable, and full of gas so you can go out and do what you need to do. Very interesting thing happened today. Someone rented that um, BMW 535i, which is extremely nice. It's extremely nice. And uh, he's going to do some Ubering in North, North, North of South Carolina. And because that car is uh, 2000, it was a one owner and it was a car that was well maintained. So I'm not like really worried about that. No issues, no red, red lights, but very interesting segue. So let's back to John. So I did not cut John off last night because I knew today was a busy day. Like today I had to wash, well take four cars to the car wash, have a tire plug, have headlights on the Mercedes replaced because uh, essentially the turn signal went out and you just can't replace the bub. <laughs> you have to replace the whole headlight. So that had to be done today. Then I had to take a car to get a GPS kill switch on. I'll pick that up tomorrow. Then I had to go all the way to Lawrenceville and pick up that last car you saw in the little clip. So it's a, it's been a full day. So I knew that I wasn't going to have time because essentially I rented out one, two, three cars today. And fortunately I got them all rented out between 10 and six. And I knew that if I cut the car off, it was going to be like me Ubering to get the car. And I, I honestly, I didn't feel like that. So I was like, you know what? I'll do it tomorrow. So I cut it off and I waited and I waited and John sent me a message. Hey man, the car won't start. It's at this location and you should come get it. And the key is under the driver or the passenger side. And it hit me that when these cars don't work, these people want to get rid of them. I like that. It's like, oh, this don't work. Bye. That's great because the car no longer has value to them because it doesn't work. He actually reached out to me and told me exactly. I already knew where it was because I had the GPS on it. I already knew where it was. And I didn't even, I was like, I sent him, I was like, oh, that's terrible. I'll send a tow truck out to get it. Thanks for letting me know. And by the way, when are you going to pay me what you owe me? Silence, silence, silence. Now, this is where it gets kind of comical because my assistant took me to get the car and my assistant, she's a pretty white girl, right? And I told her, I said, there are no, there are no, there are no white girls in this neighborhood you may catch a little static. I used to live over there. I know how these people are. So we're going and we get to the address. It is the first building is literally burnt down. I should have recorded it and it's boarded up and it's falling apart. I mean, it is hood central, 100% hood certified. And we're going around. The parking lot is tore up. So we go on this side, we don't see the X5. So we go and we hit the loop and we go up and then we see the car. But before we see the car, we see these two dudes, right? And these two dudes don't look like they belong there. They're driving the late model BMW and they're, they're looking like buckhead types. And they go do some stuff and you know, we, we let them pass and then we go and then we see the X5. 
I take out my computer and my hotspot and I, I turn it back on. And while we're there, some chick with gold teeth, mouth full of gold teeth, talking about, get off my property. And she's talking to my assistant. Because she pulls up and, you know, there's room for her to pass, but she pulls up and she's like, get off my property. I'm going to call the police. And my assistant is very non-confrontational. And she's like, okay, whatever. You can just go on by. And this woman is sitting there literally yelling at my assistant. And like I said, I prep my assistant. I say, you know, shit goes down in the hood. So the dudes in the BMW, they're behind and they're honking, honk, 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 honk. What's going on? And I get out the car because I'm getting into the BMW because I had to wait until it reset because essentially I had turned it back on, but it took like a minute or two for it to actually be able to start. And then I started and I was like, she's a bitch. And, you know, my assistant took off and then the dudes in the BMW, they just ah, peeled out. It's like, we can't wait to leave the trap. This place was a trap, a drug trap, the whole damn building. My car was parked outside of a trap and he had been there before because, you know, sometimes when I'm bored, I'll just like look and see where they're going, what they're doing. And he had been to that place several times, several times. And this is what's funny. The BMW rents out for 90 bucks a day. It was the BMW X5, the ones that the animals trashed, right? And he was doing DoorDash and Uber Eats in the hood. How do I know? This is something that I've seen numerous times. If you're a DoorDash driver, maybe you do this. They don't put the seat belt on. They fasten the seat belt and they sit on top of the seat belt and the seat belt was like that. So that let me know this guy was doing DoorDash or Uber Eats in the hood. And maybe some, you know, drug dealers get hungry. You know, they get hungry. But he had been there several times. And when I turned the car off, he had been there for like two or three hours. Who knows what John was doing there at a trap for two or three hours. And it's weird, right? It's weird because... I had a sneaking suspicion he was going to be a problem. But thanks to the GPS kill switch, I was able to shut him down and go back and get my vehicle. No calling the police, no filing police reports and all this other stuff. And it, it was really interesting. But my assistant was just like, what? Uh, I was like, this is the hood. Deanna, this is the hood. It is the hood. Also, Email Deanna, D-E-A-N-N-A, -N -N at savagefinance.org if you have any questions. Because a lot of you are emailing me, and I get like literally 200 emails a day. So I will try to address it, but it ain't going to be no time soon. Her, she's been empowered to help you, to fix things, to get into stuff, and add you to courses and all this other stuff. That's who you need to be emailing. Stop emailing me. Because, you know, I want to talk to Glendon. Good luck with that. But it was real interesting because I have some, I got another situation potentially brewing. She rented a BMW and remember the chick that was staying in the hotel? My assistant, when she saw her, she was like, is that girl a stripper? <laughs> I mean, very tiny, tatted from the knee to the neck. She had tattoos from the knee to the neck, both arms, and she lives in Stockbridge, which is like an hour away. So hopefully we don't have no problems out of her because we got to make a little drive. And uh, essentially, yeah, but my car was at a drug trap house. And this is something I consistently know. Like when I look on the GPS map, the majority of my cars are in Southwest Atlanta. They're Southwest Atlanta, below the airport, and I'm just sitting there like, God, please don't let them become yard birds. Please don't let them become yard birds. Because it's gonna take minimum 40 minutes just to get to the first ones. And this chick with the tattoos, take an hour to get down there. But once again, you know, um, some people have questioned, like, you know, I'm spending so much money. Um, 
the guy who installs my GPS, he's a pro. Every time I've turned the car off, it has worked. And when I turned it back on, it has worked. So I am sticking with whoever, you know, uh, I will pay money for convenience and speed because typically when I take a car there, if they can't get it to th that day, they get it the next day. I'm a priority customer and I like that. So I'm going to stay there. Uh, but you're not going to have any more police drama. This is kind of going to be what it is because uh, I'm seeing some stuff. I rented another car to a dude. I think he's going to be cool. I don't, I think my, I didn't get no bad juju from him. And, um, I rented the car to another dude before the chick, the, actually the blue BMW. I don't think I'm having no problems out of him. I'm concerned about the chick cause I think she's a single mother, but we will see. We will see. Cause she ain't done nothing yet. She's, she got two days and that will be, Wednesday and Thursday because essentially what I'm going to start doing is like weekends I don't have my assistant work on the weekends so if she gets late I'm going to cut her off at 12 hours and go get the car while I have my assistant aka the hit squad we'll be riding in the hit squad going to get my property <laughs> be riding be riding Deanna Deanna a good road dog because <laughs> she was like <laughs> she was like what was that about? Cause we went ahead and we worked it systematically cause we got two of the cars rented out before we left. We got a lot of cars washed. Uh, we got stuff that handled and tomorrow is going to be a light day. The day was a heavy day. The day was a busy, busy day, but tomorrow's going to be a light day and Thursday's going to be a light day because if I buy another car, it's going to be one more car and then I'm going to chill for August and September. And then allow that revenue to come in to pay off all these repair bills so we can roll into October with a surplus because the business has made, we did almost 18,000 this month. It should have been 22, the yard bird situation. And we did 14 last month. So that's uh, 32. We did almost $40,000 in revenue in the last three months. And I have a feeling that August is going to be 25, maybe 30, just depending on how things go. So that's going to go a long way to paying off the credit card, which, you know, here's my thing. You know, a lot of y'all like all these repair costs. At some point, stuff is going to stop breaking. At some point, I'm going to get all of the oil changes done. I'm going to get all of the services done because when people trade these things in, they don't do that stuff. The BMW I got, it needs a service. And I'm like, just suck it up and go ahead and do it. Because essentially someone rents that car and they start driving it hard. That's just going to make things worse. So I am paying. And essentially what I'm going to do is move all of that on top of the money I spent. And I will do a specific video about that, talking about the total cost of the business. And then I'm going to put, I'm probably going to pay Wells Fargo off and then move that into the startup cost because it is startup cost. It is a true startup cost. And for you corporate citizens, I'm talking about strategy. I got to talk to my CPA and we're going to work this out. So you're going to get some serious, serious game, serious game in the corporate papers. Like I said, at the beginning of the video, do not wait to the end of the month to jump in, jump in now, start your success. Now start planning your corporate empire. Now, Link is below. That's all I got for you guys. Not as dramatic as the stolen Porsche, but man, when I was going in there, I was like, what are we doing? And why is my car here? That's all I got for you guys. I'll see you in the next one.